And so we, we just truly appreciate each and every one of you being here and just thanking God for you. Hopefully you got your notebooks. Hopefully you got your Bibles with you. Uh, I am just excited for what the Lord is doing uh, and how the Lord is blessing us. And you know, for those of you who are uh, logged in and you're able to see uh, on your screen, uh, whether small or large, or those of you who are just on via phone, we thank God because what we're going to be talking about uh, for a little bit, we're going to be talking about the, uh, as we look at the mind uh, or the body, the soul, and the spirit. And it's very important, uh, as you can see, even in the depiction uh, of the screen there, you see uh, a human body uh, and in a, in a circle, but around that circle, at the top, you see the body. On the two sides, you see the soul. And on the bottom of the, the circle, you see the spirit. So again, you see one human body, and around that body, you're going to see the body at the top. Then you're going to see the word spirit at the bottom. And then on the two left-hand side, or the left-hand side and the right-hand side, you, you'll see, you'll write the word soul. All right, so left and right, write the word soul on the top of the body if you're making a drawing. Um, put the word body, and then at the bottom, put the spirit, okay? There, the reason why it's set up that way is because your soul is the interconnection piece uh, between your body and your spirit. The only Amen. thing that is shared between uh, the two, between your spirit and your body, is your soul, okay? The only thing that's connected between you, your spirit, and your body, your physical body, is your soul. So that's the two things that connect the, the body and the spirit together, is your soul. That makes sense, okay? So we want to talk about that. I want to talk to you about the importance of what they are separately, and then I want you to understand what they mean together. This is going to be something that I think that's really going to bless your heart. Uh, so yeah. we want to jump into this tonight. So hopefully you're ready. Again, this is being recorded. Uh, we put the last uh, two Bible studies on YouTube, so they are there. You can go and grab them. For those of you who are on Facebook, you have that opportunity to go right to our Bible study page and be able to uh, look uh, go back to it there. But this is something that I really want us to dive into because it's important for us to be able to see. Can everyone still hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay, wonderful. So this is going to be, uh, again, huge. Uh, so I want you to make sure you're taking notes. Um, again, this is something that really, really I think is important. I'm going to switch the screen from what it's showing now to show um, just uh, the scriptures as we go to them, uh, just in, uh, you know, a Bible app, you know, right there on the screen. So I'm going to switch that. But I want us to really begin to understand the distinctions and how they work together. It is so important. And I thank God for you being on tonight. If you don't see a friend, a brother or a sister on right now, text them real quick and let them know, hey, jump on. This is going to be crazy. So I want you to be a part of this uh, this evening uh, with us. So let's let's get ready to uh, jump into that. And I'll get ready to share my screen for us all here uh, momentarily. Amen. Everyone got their Bibles. They got their you got your notebooks. You got your your coffee, your juice, your water. Everyone is ready. Ready to go. <laughs> Amen. That that's that's wonderful. Let me just uh, jump into sharing my screen here again for you. Uh, we're going to, like I said, this is going to be exciting, and I just want us to be able to look at some scriptures and see how these things uh, work together for us. Again, it's it's a it's a wonderful thing. Wonderful, wonderful thing. All right. So again, we're talking about the body, the soul, and the spirit, uh, and they are different, right? They are unique, and we want to be able to touch on these things and uh, really begin to understand what the scripture says, because the scripture does uh, give some definite accounts uh, on these different things, and we need to make sure 
that we're that we're focused there that we're looking at those things and i want us to be able to do that uh with clarity and understanding so let's talk about you know this the three different natures of us uh, and as we look at this, the first place we're going to touch is the body. All right, is the body. We're going to talk about the physical vessel of the body. Very important here because it is it's our uh, it's our tangible existence. Okay, this enables uh, you know all of our sensory experiences, our interactions with the physical world, our hearing, our eyes, our touching. Right, all those different things are important when we talk about our physical body i want us to go to second corinthians chapter four second corinthians chapter four we're going to look at the 16th verse <clears throat> second corinthians chapter four and we're going to be looking at the 16th verse when y'all with me just let me know that you're that you're good all right. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 16. All right. Here's what the scripture says. It says to us, it says, therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day, okay? Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. This is important for us to note because it's allowing us to understand that just because uh, we became saved and we are, as we experience and we go through um, what the Lord is doing, when we, when we, through us and in us, as we draw close to him and he draws close to us, there's a renewness that is happening every single day is why it's very important for us to study the word of God. It's important for us to spend time with the word of God, but it's letting us know about our physical vessel here. It says, hey, our physical vessel is perishing, right? It's, it's getting older, it's deteriorating, uh, but our inward man is being renewed. So that's giving us a great understanding even as we write in the New King James Version, in the New Living Translation, it says this. It says, this is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. All right. So that's something that we must know that, yeah, we are going to experience, experience that decay, right, within our physical body, but understanding that there's a renewness. Now, the next thing I want you to also know that in our body, it serves as a temporary dwelling, right? It's subject to aging, it's, it's subject to mortality, right? And this, it is a vessel through which we can express ourselves, right? We can wave hello to somebody. We can lift up our hands and worship the Lord. Uh, we can bow before the Lord and, and kneel, right? We can, we can do so many different things with our body. We can run. It's a way of expression. We can smile, right? There, there are things that we can do that we can express what is happening on the inside of us because it is a dwelling place. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to look at verse 19 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20. Again, we're going to be tackling tonight as those are logging in. We're talking about the body, our soul, and our spirit. The body, the soul, and the spirit. Why are these important? How, what do they mean separately? What are they together? Um, and we'll, we'll get into that. So first Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 through 20. Okay, first Corinthians chapter six, verse 19 through 20. Do you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? 
You do I... not belong to yourself. For God bought you with a price. So you must honor God with your body. Okay? Do you not realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a price. So you must honor God with your body, okay? Just talking about your body, the physical body here, okay? So he's saying, as we look at that scripture, it is the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Why, why is your body the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit? Anyone know? Based on the scripture that we are reading? What does it say? It's, it's, a, it's a temple. Temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. Uh -huh. Right. You both are right. It's the temple. Look at the brothers, brother and sister duo right no. there. That was a duet, right? So, yeah, it, it is a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit because it was bought with a price. Our body was bought with a price, and that price was Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. That's important. Everything even though salvation was free to us, it did cost something, okay? There's a sacrifice that is there. You do, you, we understand, and the reason why, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about the body the, and the uh, soul and the spirit is because we are, even, we are built like our Father. We are built like our Father. So we would have, you know, as God is triune, right? We have God, the Father, we have Jesus, the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit. You are triune. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. But he's letting Lord us God. know that our body was bought with a price. Okay? Bought with a price, and it was a high price because it costs jesus it cost him his son all right so that's the body it's the way we can express ourselves it's, it's the it's a place uh it's a vessel that we live in right it's a way that we can interact amen with the world the physical world we can touch we can shake hands we can embrace um we can we can look we can hear all those different things we have a body okay so that's that's the body so now what I want us to look at, we want to look at what is the soul, okay? Our body is our physical vessel. Now let's take a look at what is the soul. And the soul is where we have this, is the seat, like the chair. It's the seat of our emotions and our will, okay? It's the seat of our emotions and our will. So the soul encompasses it it, it it completes our emotion our uh our desires our, our violations it's it's serving as the seat of our individuality our free will okay our soul this is where we think this is where those things happen and how we we handle what we hear right this is where all those things happen now we hear on different levels we hear from what people say and then we also hear from our spirit. We hear from the Father. So this is why the soul is in the middle, because it goes between the body and the spirit. The body and the spirit. So that soul is important. So the soul is where the emotions, where uh, the desires, our volitions, all those different things are. Okay? Our free will is there. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, I want us to look at this together. Matthew chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse 26. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. I'm trying not to get too excited too quickly because I need to get through this main part so that we can understand. 
So our body is our physical vessel, but our soul is where, where our emotions, our desires, right? Our individuality, our, that free will, that's where that is in our soul, all right? That's the indication of our soul. So Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, it says this, and what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? All right, that was in the New Living Translation. In the King James Version, it says it like this. As we read it, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, for what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So the soul is important enough Right, because if you can gain the whole world, if our focus is only on what we can gain materially in this physical world, right? Scripture is letting us know if you lose your soul, it means nothing. Okay, if 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 that is deter, if that goes to hell, that is that is not good. Right. And it says there, and what will a man give in exchange for his soul? This is important. So it's where our emotions is where, um, again, our our desires. And it's something to note here. Um, people of God is something to note here, because where you hear. Where you hear the Lord. Where you hear the Lord and it communicates when your spirit communicates with your soul, when the Holy Spirit communicates with your soul. These are things that are important for us to know because how you interpret, how you interpret what you see in your soul is important. You'll understand here in a little bit why we need to clear up some of the debris that is in our soul. Okay, so our soul is where our emotions, our des desires, those decisions, those things are being made, right? It's the seat of our emotion and our will. Okay, very important. Let's go stay in the same book. Let's stay in Matthew. And I want us to go to chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. All right, Matthew chapter 10. And I want us to look at verse 28. Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 28. Are everyone with me? Amen. We're here. Okay. It says here, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear oh, yes. only God who can destroy both the soul and body in hell. Wow. Okay. This is huge. This is huge. I want you to think about that. Let's read it again. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell the soul and the body in hell huh isn't there something missing there it only mentions two things what's the third thing that's missing anyone know what that is Ah, thank you. The spirit will get there. So King James Version says this, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Don't fear those people. Because in spiritually, in your understanding, the body is only temporary. This is why believers 
was willing to die for the gospel. They were willing to die for that truth because they came to an awareness that this body is going to be gone anyhow. And if I have to make a decision, I won't fear the gun. I won't fear the knife. But what I really fear is the one who can destroy not only the body, but the soul as well in hell. That's where the fear belongs. Let's look at this in a little bit more uh, of a context where I, I just like to sometimes this, let's go to, let's look up at that 25th verse. Uh, let's go through that 30 to the 30th verse, okay? It says on that 25th verse of that same chapter 10 of Matthew, it says, it is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house of Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Verse 27, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, my Lord. Okay, I'm about to get happy here. And what you hear in the air, preach on the housetops. Yeah. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from the Father's will, my Lord. But the very hairs of your head are numbered. Okay. Woo. All right. Verse 27, whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. There is a place. There is a place. There's a place we think that, you know, God only dwells in what we consider light. That is not true. Um, the reason light is here, as we would consider it, um, is because of the very fact that God spoke it. If when God spoke light onto the earth, amen, where was God? Was, it, was he in darkness? Yeah. In the dark, light was for us. You understand? And so we, when, we un, when we look at this, when he talks about, I will tell you in the dark, speak in the light. There is something about not only being closed in a place with the Lord, okay? Being closed in a place with the Lord, but also understanding and we'll get into this a different time, understanding the watches of the day. There are different watches of the day. And there's some important things about that. Some of you who find yourself up between three and 6 a.m. and sometimes uh, you'll find yourself just up at different times and you're wondering why sometimes you're up at those times. There's things that happen spiritually in the different watches of the day. Amen. Do you realize that God created the evening first before he created the day? In Genesis, it talks about he created evening and the morning, and that was the first day. Why would he put the evening first? There's something about it. We'll, we'll, we'll get there at a different time. But to understand here, that when he tells you things in the dark, he says, then speak it in the light. There is a place when you spend time with the Lord that he speaks in the depths, he speaks to our spirit and then our spirit speaks into our soul, okay? Our, spirits, our spirit speaks into our soul. And then that place, when we hear him, Whatever he speaks to us, he says, then speak it in the light. Speak it into the light. 
when it's where people are, speak it in this place. He says, I reveal my hidden mysteries to you. It's not seen, it's not, it's not noticeable, it's not something that everyone picks up on, right? I tell you in the dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in your ear, this is talking about your spiritual ear that is connected to your soul, preach on the rooftops. There's a connection between your body and your soul and your spirit, okay? And what you are hearing, what I tell you in the dark, in your soul, speak it in the light, use your body, use your tongue. This is, this is giving you, giving people awareness when I share something or when you hear different leaders share something with you with the scriptures that illuminate your mind, that gives you a new revelation, that gives you more understanding, that's speaking it into the light. Okay? And what you hear with your ear, preach on the housetops. Amen. This is important. And so when he's talking about this time, when you're looking at Matthew chapter 10, you're dealing with people, right, who are believers, who are standing up not only for God, but for Jesus being the Messiah, Jesus being that one. And so people were out to kill them. Because at this time, they believe it is heresy. They believe that the, the, the Messiah, the Son of God, has not come yet. They couldn't believe that it was Jesus. And so they said, don't fear for your body. Fear the one that can take your body out and your soul and put it in the hell. Be more in fear of that, of him, which is God, the righteous judge, right? Than the one who can only hurt your body. All right, let's keep going. So now that's the soul, the seat of the emotions, where the will is, where that understanding is, right? Where all those different things come together and your body is the vessel, all right? So we covered the body, we covered the soul. Now let's cover the spirit, let's cover the spirit. And then we'll get into the meat of this thing, all right? So the spirit is our connection to the divine. Our spirit is a connection to the divine. This is the channel in which we commune with God, right? And we, and this is where we understand or perceive spiritual truths. Spirit is very important, okay? All three aspects of us are important, but a spirit, a spirit is very important. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we want to look at verse 11. That's going to be our primary scripture there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to look at our primary verse, verse 11. But let's just put it in context. I'm going to start reading from verse 9. But our primary verse is verse 11 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, but as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God prepared for those who love him, my Lord. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Ah, capital S, all right? I want us to pay attention to that. For the Spirit, capital S, searches all things. Yes, Glory to God. the deep things of God. What searches all things? Oh. Spirit. All right, spirit the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, His Spirit, searches spirit. all things, the deep things of God. Now, verse 11. For what man knows 
the things of a man except the spirit of the man, lowercase s. Everyone see that? Yeah. Yes. So now we're dealing with two different spirits. We're dealing with our own spirit and we're dealing with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit searches all things and the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Right? So your spirit knows. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Holy Spirit or the spirit of God. Now, verse 12, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God, my Lord. Verse 13, these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with Spiritual. Woo. I'm about to shout here. Okay. Let's look at it in Living Translation. This is good. Verse 9. Verse 9, New Living Translation, it says this. This is what the scripture means when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it Lord was... God to us that God revealed these things by the spirit. So what was revealed to them, what they're talking about, right, is was revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. For his spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Whew. So the Holy Spirit gives us enlightenment into the deep things of God his deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except the person's own spirit. And he's trying to explain how the Holy Spirit works and how the Holy Spirit un knows these things. He's given us an example of our own spirit. Our spirit knows everything that our thoughts, it knows it's connected to our soul where our thinking, our emotions, our will is, all those things are there. So our own spirit knows our mind, it knows our thoughts, it knows our emotions, just as the Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God. And the Holy Spirit is communicating with our spirit to let us know those deep things that are in God. This is how things are revealed to you. So when you get understanding of the word of God, when you get understanding of what God is doing, that understanding, we must know what God is doing Amen. When we get understanding from the scriptures, when God illuminates the scriptures to us and we get revelation and we get understanding of what he is saying, you are getting a tap into from the Holy Spirit, grabbing some of the deep things, depending on your spiritual maturity, you will get deep things from God from in on the inside of him through the Holy Spirit. And it is revealed to us in our own spirit. Spirit. Oh, it is yeah. a divine connection to the spirit. Oh, it is a divine connection to God. This is why we don't pray from our emotions or from our soul. We have got to pray from the spirit because it is a di direct connection from understanding when we speak to the Lord and when we allow the Lord and be still and allow the Lord to speak to us, there is a frequency through the Holy Spirit that connects with our spirit that allows us to see the deep secrets, the hidden things of God. He says, I, 
I, I, I, I will show you. You will, you will look, you will see things in the dark places. I'll reveal to you things in the dark places and you will speak them in the light and you will hear things with your ears and you will preach them from the rooftops. This is why praying with your spirit, it is not just praying in tongues, even though that is a part of it. But there is a place that when you spend time with the Lord, he will begin to reveal things to you, not only from his scripture, but he will begin to speak to you and reveal things to you. This is a powerful thing for you to know, this connection of the spirit. Our bodies are not seated in heavenly places with the Lord, but our spirit is. Glory to God. In Christ. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, my Lord. I hope y'all getting this. This is, ooh, this is good. And then he goes yeah. on and says in this New Living Translation, verse 12, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, who we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. This is not coming from, uh, you know, the in those times, it's not coming from the Torah, it's not coming from the philosophers of that day. It's like, this is not human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. Getting a download. Have any of you ever received a text message? Yeah. Y'all like, of course. Of course I've received yeah. a text message, right? Yeah. You got a text message. You got a message because it was sent. You are able to receive that message because the person has identified you with a number. That message didn't go to anyone else per se, but that was a message sent directly to you. Sometimes, yes, we can have mass text messages, but the message came to you. It came to you because you have been identified as a person or someone that is connected to you. Hence, the Holy Spirit is connected to our spirit. And so you get a text message from the Holy Spirit within your spirit. It is, it's you because there's a connection there. And you get to access the deep things of God because the Holy Spirit is in you. This is why it's important to have the Holy Spirit. All right. Hope y'all I hope y'all taking notes. Write this stuff down. So Amen. this so when we look at the eternal essence of our being, right? Our spirit connecting with eternal and transcending limitations of our physical and emotional realm. We're talking about a different place here. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my tower, in him will I trust. There's something, there's a place. Your physical body is not there, but your spirit is there. Oh, let's go to 1 Corinthians, same, same book. 1 Corinthians, we're gonna to go to chapter six. 1 Corinthians chapter six and the 17th verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And our main verse there is going to be chapter uh, verse 17. Everyone with me? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? <clears throat> Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, 
and join it to a prostitute? Never. No. And don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? No. For the scripture says, the two are united into one. Verse 17. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Mm, my Lord. So it then goes, says, run, run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does for sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Okay. That's right. So here, remember, it says our body was bought with a price. That's what we started in the beginning when we were talking about our physical body. So because we are indwelled with the Holy Spirit, we are no longer, right? Our body is not our own. It was bought with a price, according to the scripture that we read. So now it goes into this in a different, completely different scripture and tells us, don't you realize that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? So that means that my spirit is also just so so he gives an explanation he gives an explanation of sexual immorality with a prostitute okay and how he says that how they in their bodies become one he says so it is so in the spirit ah but the person who joined to the lord is one spirit with him Mm. Oh, my Lord. This is where we have the connection. Because of the connection, because of what Christ did on the cross and his resurrection, we now become joined with him in the spirit. We are part of him. Hallelujah. We are part. This is why he said that we are the body of Christ. We are many members, but one body our spirits are connected see to be seated in heavenly places with the lord i don't want you to think that there's three million chairs lined up with everybody who's a christian sitting next to the lord no our spirit is in his spirit we are in him when he is seated at the right hand of the father oh. mm. Yes, we Lord. are there. Our spirit is physically there with him. This is how you can see. This is how we can hear. This is we this is how we have the authority. <laughs> this is how we can boldly become go before the throne of grace. How do we get into that heavenly place because our spirit is in him? Yes, Lord. Ah, uh, that and even when he talks about uh, when he talks about in the end times, he says, "And where I be, that you will may be there also." That means our soul will now then be connected with our spirit. But right now, our spirit is connected to the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, and this infilling it gives us connection right to God. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So he tries to give the explanation. He tries to give it to us there. And so he's now letting us know. So now we've talked about the body, one part of us. We talked about the soul, right? Is where our, our mind, the seat of our emotions, all those different things are there. Our desires, everything is there. And then we talked about the spirit. That's our connection to the vine, our spirit, okay? What he breathed into us. That gave us life. Mm, 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 mm. The spirit. And I don't. I. I, I if you've never seen a person who has passed away, and you, if you've never been to a wake, you can see that there's no life in us when we pass. There's no life in us when we pass. It is because what he breathed into us, our spirit. Ooh. He didn't breathe oxygen. He breathed his spirit. He put a part of himself in us. Yes, That's Lord. what goes back to the Lord. That's what goes back to be absent from the what? 
body with the Lord spiritual. Mm. What was breathed into us is now taken from us when we pass away. So there's another level of consciousness, another level of life that is in us. That is more than just the, 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 the oxygen that we exhale or the CO2 that we exhale and the oxygen that we inhale. There is more to us. There's more to your life than breath. There is a breath that was called, that was breathed into us by God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let us make man in our own image. And he formed us out of the dirt and then he breathed into us and it gave us life. Ah. He breathed into us and it gave us life. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. So now, how am I doing? Okay. Let's talk about the interconnection of the body, the soul, and the spirit. Let's get to the meat of this thing. The body, the soul, and the spirit connected together, right? Mm -hmm. This, this, this connection. It forms a holistic unity that defines us as humans, okay? It defines us in the human experience. I'm not just speaking words to you. This is why I'm taking you to scripture. And if this is the first time you're hearing a breakdown like this, you write these scriptures down and you get into the word of God. This is so important for us to know. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, and we're going to go to that fifth chapter of first thessalonians y'all getting anything out of this oh yeah good 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 first thessalonians chapter five we're going to primarily focus on that 23rd verse but again i want to give us some context so we're going to start at verse 20. first thessalonians chapter five we're going to start at the 20th verse. It says, do not scoff at prophecies. Don't make little of it, right? It says, don't, don't brush it off. Don't blow it off. It says, do not scoff at prophecies. It says, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Verse 23. This is the meat here. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. Mm. Whew. All right. Verse 23 again. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way. May the God of peace make you holy in every way. And may your whole spirit and your whole soul and your whole body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Amen. God will make this happen for he who calls you is faithful. My Lord, that'll preach all by itself right there. So let's look at this in the, in the King James Version. So we, we, can, we can look at it here. Verse 23, now may the God of peace himself sanctify, sanctify you completely. Who's sanctifying you? us god god is sanctifying us and what 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 part what essence of god is sanctifying us the god of peace the one who wants to keep things together the one who wants to keep things joined the god of peace himself sanctify you completely not the god of anger not his not that personality of him but the the, the peace of him the God of peace, 
the one who keeps wants to keep the peace amongst the people, wants to keep the relationship whole. Who's doing the sanctifying? God is doing the sanctifying, and he's sanctifying you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Ah, he who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. My Lord. You got, we've got to ask ourselves here, and I'll, I'll pause here. We've got to ask ourselves here. No one here is walking blameless. None of us are walking blameless. We have to go before the Lord and repent. And he put, throws it away and he puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. How do we walk blameless? How did he sanctify? He sanctified us through his son, Jesus. Jesus walked blameless. And through him, we can walk blameless. There's this one head, and Christ is the head, and we are the body. He's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. The only way we don't have spot and wrinkle is through Jesus Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. This is the only way. God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless yes we have our part to play we've got to walk this thing out we've got to walk like jesus walked we got to think like jesus think we got to do those different things but it's because of his blood is because of him walking blameless that allows us to be sanctified completely through god it's the only thing. That's why it says, he doesn't say, Arnold, who calls you is faithful. What is he, what, what is God faithful to? His Sanctifying word. you completely? Word. Hmm. Right? He he's sanctified us He's and he's faithful. Yes. I had someone tell me today, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, uh, you know, God is going to be done with me and, you know, those and, and, and stuff like this. It says it takes a wise person, a wise man to realize that they can fall down 70 times and get back up again. Mm. Why yes, is that Lord. scripture so important? That scripture is so important because you, we realize that the guilt that comes when you fall constantly the guilt that comes, not from God, not from the Holy Spirit, the guilt that comes, you, you're not, you're, you can't do this. This is not, you can't make it. Look at you. Every time you fall, every time there's something else, you fall, you fall, you fall, you fall, you fall. A wise man will realize and not take what the devil is speaking in your ears, will not take it and realize a wise man. You, this is why we cast down vain imaginations. You can't stop the devil from talking because the devil talks from the same spirit realm that God speaks to us from. We can't stop the devil from speaking because if you say, you know, devil stop talking or, uh, uh, you know, I block my ears, my spiritual ears from the devil talking. Is that what Jesus did when the devil talked to him? No. Nope. Mm -mm. nope. No. Cast down vain imaginations, those thoughts, those things. This is why it takes a wise person to realize that they can fall down those many times and get back up again because we've got to fight what the devil might put on us guilt. See? I told you the accuser of the brother and that's what he who he is right that's what that's what the bible says he's the accuser of the look look at you Amen. you like that you like that guy on the movie of life with eddie murphy and and martin lawrence can't get right can't get right just can't get it right look at you look at you you look you you you, you failed again look at you look at you and it takes a wise person to fight against those thoughts 
And don't allow those things to seep down into your soul because if it gets down into your soul, you, you, you begin to dull the voice of God, the spirit, the Holy Spirit. You begin to dull. You won't be able to communicate with God. This is why the enemy comes into our soul. There's a fight for the soul of us. Ah, he sanctifies. He is faithful. And give you one more, and then we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop here after I give you this one more. You gotta understand how it, how it is in harmony. There's a balance. There's a spiritual well being that's happening here. There's a connection how this how this has taken place. I want us to go to Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter four. And we're going to go to the 12th verse. Hebrews chapter four. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Hebrews chapter four. And we're going to look at verse 12. This lets you know the divisions. The, 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 the completeness of you is three parts. Body, soul, spirit. Body, soul, spirit. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living. The word of God is living and powerful wait a second how are the pages in my bible living how are the words on a physical page living and powerful It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Two-edged sword, yes. Piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit. And of joints and marrow. My grandmother, she used to crack the bone and suck the marrow out the, out the I don't know if y'all know about that. It, yes. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart okay i want you to look at that because this is talking about the word of god is living and powerful remember the bible says that the word of god was is was written by the inspiration of god the inspiration of god That's the word of God. Inspired, spoke to men's spirit to write down the accounts. So the word of God is living and powerful. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and the spirit. Yes, Lord. Your spirit, your spirit is a lowercase s, your spirit and your soul. It can separate it. It's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The thoughts and the intents is where? Is that in my body? Is it in my soul or is it in my spirit? Where are my thoughts and intents of my heart? Where is that located? Soul. Say it loud, say it proud. In your soul. Your soul. That's where it is. Okay. That's where the intent is. That's where the thoughts are. It's in your soul. This is why the Holy Spirit and your spirit will try to control your soul. And this is why the enemy will try to control your soul. Paul said it, there's a war going on within my members. Yeah. 
Now you know where the members are. In my body, in my soul, and in my spirit, there's a war. There's a war going on. The spirit is willing. That's my spirit, lowercase s, but the flesh is weak. That's my soul. It should be clicking now. Your spirit is willing, but the flesh or your soul is weak. Your body is only the puppet or the temple of what your soul determines or your spirit. One of the other is controlling. Either your spirit is controlling your soul or your soul, your mind, your, your intent, your will is controlling your body. One of them are going to rule, but only one of them connects all the other two together. Your soul connects to your spirit and your body connects to your soul. Your soul is what is is what the Bible is looking for for salvation. Your soul. That's why the scripture said that we read earlier. Fear the one who can take not only your body, but your soul as well and put it into hell. Your soul is what either the devil is after and it's certainly what God is after. Ooh, yes. thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord God, because your word, I pray, Lord Heavenly Father, that your word, Father, that in all our getting that we would get understanding, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord God, Father, as your people study your word, Father, I pray, Lord God, that they do not just close this up and go listen to something else. Father, I pray, Lord God, that they would actually take the time to study. Father, for where you have, or where you're taking us, where you're going with the study, Father, to understand the distinctiveness and the connectivity of our body, our soul, and our spirit. I pray, Lord. Father, that you would give us understanding so that the enemy can't come and take away, Lord God, what was said tonight. I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. I thank you, God, for allowing us, Lord God, to hear your word, allowing us to understand your word. I thank you for what you're doing, Father. Father, watch over your people. Cover them, Lord God, with Lord God, with 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 your angels, Lord Heavenly Father. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you, Lord God, for how you're maneuvering them, ordering their steps, Lord God, giving them what they stand in need of, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that your people are finding a hunger, Lord God, and a thirst for you, Lord God, to get to know you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you are always speaking, God. Father, let us find these dark places, Lord God, where you speak, Lord God. Lord, let us find these hidden places, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit can reveal to our spirit, Lord Heavenly Father, the deep things of you. God, I thank you for what you're doing. Father, it all, Lord God, comes together to salvation. It all comes together to let people know, Father, that you did not only save us on the cross and your resurrection, but you stayed with us. You you indwelled inside of us and you are now taking us into heavenly places this is how we know lord god as you said our weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god in pulling down strongholds that we wrestle yes, not against flesh and blood but against <laughs> principalities spirits lord god authorities wickedness and darkness in high places father you allow our spirit to dwell in these places so that we can fight hallelujah the good fight of faith and father we thank you now father we begin to speak those things that be not as though they are we begin to speak over people's lives and declare victory lord god we declare lord god salvation god we declare lord god the baptism of your holy spirit god we declare lord heavenly father lord god that shackles be broken lord heavenly father lord god that people will be delivered from demons within their their soul, Lord God. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We call it done in your mighty precious name, Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 I love you. God is good. Hey, if you have thank any you.
questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you for the God is truly good. Remember that on this Friday, we have prayer from 1 to 2, and we also have open discussion at 8 p.m. So if you want to be a part of that and you don't have the number, please let us know. Reach out to someone. Someone has it or reach out to me directly. Thank God for you. I love you, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a blessed night, Have Pastor. Blessed. Love you. God bless you. everybody. God bless you all. Bye. Good night. Take care. Good night. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. Pastor Arnold here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Uh, that way you can stay connected with us and see all the new and upcoming things that we have from Sunday sermons to Bible studies to special interviews. We are so excited that you are here with us. God bless you and know that we're praying for you.